and welcome back. Why it's a wet morning in Belize City. We're about to jump things off. And of course, very interesting topic. Uh, we are actually about to discuss uh, understanding the extradition laws of Belize. Now, in to tell us about it is attorney Anthony Sylvester, of course, attorney at law. We want to wish you all the very best, sir. Good morning. Welcome. Morning, um, John. Morning, Marlene. Um, thanks for having me. Definitely. Mm -hmm. you, you, you don't have your... Uh, morning peace on it yet. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, like we mentioned it's so nice to have you in um you know we've heard so many uh, times about extradition extraditing you know uh, and a lot of folks might not really understand what it is like understanding the laws we've heard so much about like we mentioned let's let's dive into it what is what is extradition and uh, delve into the the laws yeah. of belief well um <clears throat> Um, extradition is a process whereby um, countries um, enter into agreements with one another um, where they agree to, to have surrendering of a, a, a person within their jurisdiction mm -hmm. to another foreign country um, who is accused of committing a crime in that next country or has been convicted of a crime in that other country and have fled the jurisdiction of the other country. Mm -hmm. Now the, the concept or rationale behind the extradition process operates um, within the realm of um, um, international law, um, the way countries um, should have an obligation to each other, and it is a way in which um, international crimes um, is, is also um, being able to, to combat, to be combated. Mm -hmm. And um, not all countries have extradition agreements or arrangements with, with, with each other. Uh, for instance, in the case of Belize, mm -hmm. Belize um, only has extradition arrangement with three countries, the United States of, the America, United States of America, Guatemala, and um, uh, Mexico. Um, very interestingly, bef even after the, the, the government actually enters into an agreement with another foreign state, so that you know, in the case of Belize, I mentioned those three countries which um, we, our government um, has entered into extradition treaty arrangements with. That treaty arrangement or that treaty agreement has to thereafter be brought to the National Assembly and incorporated or passed into a law. Mm -hmm. um, so that, for instance, um, we, as way back as, in, as 19, 1989, the government of Belize and Mexico had entered into a treaty arrangement with respect to extradition. But it wasn't until April of 2016 mm -hmm. that actually that agreement was actually incorporated and it was, became law in Belize. And so at that point in time, then it would now be lawful it, were the go, um, government of Mexico to make an extradition request. Then the extradition process can actually um, um, be, be started. And on the point of the extradition process, there are, there, are dif there are different phases or stages with respect to the extradition process. First stage, of course, is where the foreign state actually makes the request. So the request is actually done through diplomatic channels. Mm -hmm. So say in the case of say maybe Guatemala were to make an extradition request, um, the Guatemala, um, Guatemalan embassy would um, send the request to the, the foreign um, office, the foreign ministry in Belize. Um, at that point in time, the, the, the foreign minister, he peruses or, um, and determine whether, not whether if there is evidence to support the extradition, because um, in the media, um, and, and it has been um, unfortunately been said um, inaccurately that the foreign minister has to be satisfied that there is evidence to support the, yeah. the extradition yeah. request. That is not what the foreign minister does at that stage. The first thing he, he as um, our foreign minister, Minister Ellington, um, I think last week he had clarified um, that issue with respect to a pending extradition request, um, which is is not being made. He he had explained that well. No, he, he isn't. Uh, he isn't to determine whether there is evidence to support yeah. the extradition. It's more in terms of administrative, um, and there's other um, duties which are placed. For instance, he first has to be satisfied that well, this country that's making a request, we in fact actually have a treaty arrangement with mm -hmm. with yeah. that country, and he one of the things that has to be considered as well is whether the request is not of a political character in nature, mm -hmm. so that it's. Uh, to put it another way, um, a, a country wants a political um, enemy, yeah. and it is, and so a request is being being put in the guise of extradition. But it's really, in, in fact, and in truth, a, a, a request to have 
um, a political dissident, as it were, yeah. be actually um, repatriated to that country. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've had situations like that. I mean, yes. you, you may recall, like, um, I think it was 2016, for instance, you had in Turkey, there was a coup. Mm -hmm. And the Turkish government, they, they sought an extradition request to the United States for um, the repatriation of um, a Turkish cleric. But what, what um, I think his name was Golin, um, but that individual, he and the present prime minister um, in Turkey, they, they have been political foes for years. So the U.S. Um, State yeah. Department, they did not, um, in actually, they did, they did not yeah. um, um, entertain the and proceed with yeah. that, that request. And th though both countries, they, they, were, they are allies, um, what, it, what, what that example shows is that um, there are certain obligations Legal obligations been placed on the country because mm -hmm. what in fact is is, is being done in, is is that a, a, an individual, particularly in a case of where a person is only accused, I'm accused of committing an offence in Mexico, in the United States, or Guatemala. I'm not accused of committing an offence in Belize. And so the country, um, whilst it agrees to 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 where certain eventualities were to occur, to to have you be uh, have me be surrendered. There are certain things in law that has to be satisfied. And so that first part is done by the, the, yeah. the Minister of Foreign Affairs. So okay. it's more like a filtering yes, process to is, ensure it that it's not, let's say, and I like the example you gave of Turkey. And we've yeah. seen other instances where activists and whistleblowers uh, seek, uh, seek uh, or travel to another country yes. um, because they're fearful of being extradited to, to other countries as a result, because yes. of political victimization. Yes. So it's not necessarily like a case it's that a the case. foreign affairs is, is reviewing no, to no, look no. at evidence no. and whether or not there's enough proof or if the person seems guilty. It's just yes. to make sure the intentions yes. are legitimate. Because our constitution, um, fortunately, provides that there are separations um, um, with respect to the different arms of government, mm -hmm. so that the foreign ministry is the executive. Yeah. So their function is, is, is very clear and distinct from the judiciary, the court. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's after um, certain filtering has been satisfied, the minister is satisfied, for instance, that the, the extradition request is not a political nature, then it's sent off. Um, for the next process, the, the court process, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and is that is that the court process? The court makes a determination as to whether um, the materials which have been submitted um, in the re requested, in, sorry, in the bundle, mm -hmm. that 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 meets a meets a, a threshold for the person to be um, extradited. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing: there are certain certain things as well that, that is done at that process. One of the things that that first has to be satisfied is that well. The documents, in fact, are not those documents are have been properly authenticated because um, for you, 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 the, the, the court in Belize, they are not receiving, they are not seeing the witnesses, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. themselves. So what they would rely on, they would rely on the fact that um, the documents then are properly authenticated. So you have um, um, a, a foreign officer, um, in the case of our um, extradition act, mm -hmm. they the, the United States, sorry, the, the, the ambassador in the United States or the ambassador in this, but these three countries, they have to be the ones who, in fact, actually authenticate documents to say, yes, um, we've actually reviewed and seen the original, and so these photocopies, they're, they're in fact, actually true yeah. and, and authentic. Mm -hmm. So, so there, are, there, there are certain things that has to be done um, and at the court process as well. The court has to be satisfied that, look, this offense or these offenses for which the person is being sought, these are offenses in the country, I believe. Been involved in um, a case where a person was sought for um, to be extradited for um, drug trafficking offense. What mm -hmm. what happened is that the the, the, the drug or the or the, the um, that was that the person was sought to be extradited in respect of um, that wasn't considered to be a controlled drug in Belize. Mm. So the court therefore could not um, order that individual to be extradited. So the court has to be satisfied that what the person is wanted for in the other state that also meets or is satisfies the conditions of being a crime within the country of Belize. So it has to be a crime in both countries? Yes, uh, that's what they call a dual criminality, you know? Okay. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that is the role of the court? That is the role of the court and as, as well to ensure that 
the material, they satisfy the, um, the various laws, evid evidential um, laws of um, with respect to um, what, what we in Belize call preliminary inquiries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so once those conditions are satisfied, once those, once those laws um, are, are complied with, um, the magistrate thereafter makes a dis determination as to whether um, there is what, 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 what in law um, is referred to as a prima facie case. Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that, the, that, that, that the, the, the person would eventually be found guilty. Um, you because mean that there's substantial evidence. Yes. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, if you could use, for example, by way of example, uh, again, there, there are certain offenses in Belize which are, are tried in the Supreme Court. At the magistrate court, mm -hmm. they, they, they are, the magistrate has to be satisfied as a prima facie case. But invariably, persons go through that stage and they're later yeah. acquitted in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And that was going to be uh, my next question, because I think if, if Belizeans reflect on the most recent extradition cases, they were, they were drawn out yes. um, and went, all, went up to the Court of Appeal. Yes. Um, so what would happen is if I, there's a request for my extradition, let's use me as an example, for whatever reason, it goes to the magistrate court, they establish that there's substantial evidence or, uh, for me to, to be, for the, prop, for the extradition request to be executed, I then take it up to a higher court. Invariably, what happens is that most people would um, appeal that decision. Um, well, it, it appeal in the sense that it, 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 it operates as a review of the decision of the yeah. magistrate. Um, it's actually called a habeas corpus application, yeah. um, where the person actually applies to the court and, and asks the court to, to question the validity of their detention. Because once the magistrate has made a determination and said, look, I think there is sufficient evidence for you to be extradited and makes an order for that person to be extradited. You can still go you to apply to the Supreme Court and say, listen, I don't necessarily agree with the decision, so I would want you to inquire into whether I am legally being detained. Mm -hmm. Because at that point in time when um, the order is made, generally, um, for the oftentimes, well, for, for the most part, you would be held in custody. Mm -hmm. um, Though it's very interesting that there is, there is case law which says that even if I am ordered to be extradited, I could still be granted bail. Okay. Um, it's, it's a possibility, but of course, you would have to, 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 to prove and establish convince. and convince and persuade the court um, that there are indeed very special and ex exceptional circumstances where that, that should be done. Even if that country uh, would have strong or sufficient evidence to say that uh, you know you are to be extradited to my country yeah. uh, would they would that country uh, do some sort of an appeal to say you know what we really need this individual across and then uh, in uh, for example Belize would say okay we will do this again and we will try to get this individual across to you is there any such thing that a country would have sufficient evidence even though the courts here have ruled that there is not a bit, uh, sufficient evidence to extradite the individual well, once the, the judicial determination is made with respect to that specific request, mm -hmm. that's the end of the matter. Um, now, if there are other evidence with respect to other crimes that may have been committed, then, then I, I suppose a new request would have to be um, sent. Mm -hmm. but, but once, because it's, every, every case is done by a case-by-case -case basis, mm -hmm. you see? So once you are cleared, um, uh, and it depends on the, the, the way in which you're cleared as well. Um, um, to, to answer your, your question there, what would, uh, what would obtain is that there would have to be, the request would have to be um, resent. Mm -hmm. And so the, the process itself may, may, may have to be um, started afresh. Mm -hmm. But um, there can't be, whilst a request has been made and the court says, okay, there's not sufficient evidence the foreign state can't say, oh, by the way, I had these additional evidence uh, here. Um, no, that can't be done um, because so that at the time the request is made, they need to, to have all their evidence be, um, be, 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 be part and parcel of the documents which are sent um, for, for the extradition request. Mm -hmm. Does it matter uh, or what difference does it make what country the offense is, is made in? Well, the... Well, the, the, the importance is that the offense, um, the country that makes the request, they're alleging that, listen, I committed an offense in their country. And so they want me to be 
extradited, they want me to be sent to their country. So the offense has to occur in the, uh, that, that country that makes the request is called a requesting country. Mm -hmm. And the country to whom the request is made is made, it's called a requested country. So the requesting country, the offense has to occur there. But the, con the, re the, the, the country to whom the request is made, um, in the case of say, Belize, the, the, the course has to be satisfied as well um, of this dual criminality that I spoke about earlier that, listen, um, it's also an offense in the country of Belize. And, 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 and when the, these treaty arrangements are made, um, those things are, um, both, both, both countries, both states, they agree to these things. Mm -hmm. So it's not as though during the process, um, one of the country um, would be caught off guard to, and, and, and just know that. I mean, these are all things which are actually, in fact, set out in the, in the treaties, in the, in the mm -hmm. agreements that are actually entered into between both, both states. Mm -hmm. so, so for the most part, everybody knows what is required and what is to be done. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the case, uh, in, 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 in these cases, uh, you know, attorney at law for many years, uh, I'm not saying that you're wrong, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm have not. our country been uh, uh, aggressive in trying to get people who have done crimes or committed crimes in this country uh, and trying to get them over here to try them? Well, um, I would not be in a position to, to, to answer that. that. That is a question best left for the authorities, the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the the, the, the Ministry of Home Affairs, um, yeah. because they, are, they would be the one who, who has um, um, this information and, and they would be in a position to explain what efforts have been made and how successful or, or, mm -hmm. or otherwise has, has that been the, uh, the case. Yeah. And talking of the, the other way around, successful extradition requests uh, made from the U.S. that we know of uh, the C. Will cases, Red Fuller cases. Those are mm. more of recent memories yes. of our recent memory, where people have seen uh, that they were, after a long, drawn-out uh, court battle, that they were eventually released. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, well, in the case of um, Red Fuller, um, because I mentioned that there are different stages, different mm -hmm. phases of the, the process. So the first phase was when the, the request was made to the foreign ministry. Yeah, it's filtered and then. Um, it's thereafter sent to the court. Um, in the case of Red Fuller, after the court determination, um, an, uh, an appeal or, 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 um, was made to the foreign minister because the foreign minister, after the court has determined that the person is to be extradited, he st or she still has a, a, a duty mm -hmm. to actually review and make a final determination as to whether, in fact, he, because it is he um, who will have that person be surrendered, he will actually make an order for the person to be surrendered. And I think in respect to Red Fuller's case, um, at that point, um, the foreign minister had declined to actually um, um, have him be surrendered. Um, uh, there obviously has to be legal reasons and um, for, for, for that to be done. It cannot just be um, because I like this person, you know, and. And I don't recall a specific reason, but certainly there would have been have been legal reasons because that that determination certainly would have been able to be, to have been challenged um, by the, the requested state. Um, in the mm -hmm. case, this would have been the United States of America. No? Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, but but certainly certainly the, the, the um, that would have been an extremely long period of time for, mm -hmm. for him to have been surrendered. I think the, the incident may have gone back way to 1989, yeah. and yeah. Um, the the actual court yeah. process was would have actually taken almost a decade or, 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 or and more. So in all the circumstances it would have been the, the delay because um, on, on, on due delay in the completion of an extradition process mm -hmm. um, is a basis to, to, mm -hmm. to not have somebody be surrendered. No? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. There was, and I want to be very careful in terms of uh, making mention of this particular situation, but there was actually the situation with John McAfee. Uh, where uh, mm -hmm. there were actually a documentary out as to what took place and how it took place. And some folks were actually up in arms of uh, what was alleged uh, by him, uh, actually by, by uh, what the documentary uh, eventually showed out, showed out. In a situation like that, where people you know, saw things and it was actually said on documentary, uh, is there anything uh, to say, you know what, we could have actually gotten this individual back to eventually answer some questions and 
in, in this case, the, the, and, and like I mentioned, uh, the aggression of our country in terms of trying to get this individual to come back to answer some questions. Can you speak to us about that? I, I, I see your point. Um, I suppose that comes, a um, question comes um, from the, the, the standpoint that, well, we've seen mostly requests being yeah. made to our country and, 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 and we don't do see we it, right. it being reciprocated. Um, again, I would not be in a position to, to explain if perhaps maybe, perhaps maybe a, such a request is being, being made or has been made. I don't know. Um, so the, the proper authorities would be in a position to answer that question. I, I would not be able to speak to, to that. Um, my, my engagement in this extradition yeah. process is usually at the, at the court stage, you know. Yeah. But I, so I, I wouldn't be in a position to, to answer that, you know, as much as I am tempted to say something, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, most times, uh, extradition requests don't play out in the media at this early on. Yes, no, 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 no. Um, actually, a lot of behind the scenes uh, work takes place. So, for instance, it's probably years after that the, the actual request actually is, is, is sent to the, the other country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now, this has been, in fact, a, a part of uh, the concern that has been expressed the, the fact that so much details of the extradition request have been made public. How can that impact uh, a case of, of the one most recent? Well, um, I would prefer not to speak about the, the, the most recent case. Yeah. Um, but in a general but, sense, but, but having but, the but in, a, but in a general yeah. sense, um, yes, um, usually what should take place is that the, 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 the documents um, which form part of the request, that is actually to be unsealed for the first time in court. So it's at the court that everybody is for the first time able to see the documents. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so that as a general rule is what is how it would be would. how it would be yes mm. <laughs> now let's I, I think what happens uh, oftentimes is that that uh, we talk about extradition and um, we don't always have it uh, explained to the public as to mm. you know uh, how vulnerable am I um, mm. to, to be extradited for, let's say it's, it's a driving offense, you know, in the yes. States. Are there certain crimes yes. that are, That's a very good um, that are uh, used, used yes. for extradition? Yes, that's a very good question. Um, there, there, are two, um, t there are two ways in which, or two types of crimes, um, generally speaking, that a person um, rec extradition request is, is made for. Um, there is a list of crimes in the, in the, in the Extradition Act which mm -hmm. um, authorizes um, the extradition or would have the extradition process um, be, 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 um, um, be initiated. Um, it would be very serious crimes with murder, um, drug trafficking, and so on and so forth. And then if that crime is not listed in that schedule, okay. um, however, it is a crime which may be similar to another crime in the country of Belize. For instance, um, in, in the United States, um, they, they, they have what may be regard, regarded as um, first degree murder and second degree murder. Mm -hmm. We don't, we, uh, they, in Belize, they, they, the offense of, of murder isn't categorized as first degree okay. and second degree. It's yeah. murder and then manslaughter. manslaughter. So what would happen is that the court would look at the, the, the offense and say, okay, well, is this, is this really and truly the same type of offense? It may not necessarily have the same name, yeah. but actually, it actually is the same offense. Mm -hmm. the, the elements of the offense are actually um, similar. Mm -hmm. So that is what they, they would call a, it's a sui generis offense, the offense of a similar nature. Mm -hmm. And then um, finally, um, in response to this question, the, the offense for which you are sought must um, carry a penalty which is more than 12 months. Mm -hmm. So that, um, to your point, when okay. you were speaking about us, um, uh, speeding ticket. Um, <laughs> that's a trivial offense and they, they, they because the extradition process are very lengthy and a very um, of course. Um, costly process yeah. so um, it, it is the, the countries agree that man we, we won't put a state through yeah. um, the, the, this entire um, process where it's only a speeding ticket um, mm -hmm. the individual is wanted for so it has to be an offense which which the, the penalty is um, exceeds 12 months in okay. imprisonment. Okay. And obviously more serious offenses. Yeah. No? That, so the difference would be running a red light or a hit and run. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, so yeah. You, yeah, they, they, yeah. They, they, they hit and run, of course, no? <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. Just, I, to be able to clarify, Justin, in... Yeah. in um, yeah. Well, that's a very good question. 
So, 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 so when you go to the United States <laughs> on, in summer, <laughs> and you have a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I am not guilty of that offense. I, I'm very sure of that. I don't like driving outside Belize. But, um, you know, I think uh, going back to, to uh, one of the questions I asked earlier about successful extradition requests made from the U.S., what are, are some of the examples that come to mind for you? Um, in, well, in recent times, um, what, what we've had, because the, the, the process um, is one which, as I say, the, 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 the person who's been sought, the defendant, mm -hmm. he, he has the right to appeal. Mm -hmm. And um, what happens if, um, during the course is that of, of, of law, and law develops so that, for instance, we, in the past, um, mm -hmm. it, it, you, I mean, Belizeans, um, all of Belizeans would say, maybe, I would say that it was perhaps maybe quite easy for, for a person to be extradited, but the law has actually developed and um, the court now has, a, has to conduct extradition requests, um, bearing in mind that the person has certain fundamental rights. And mm -hmm. so, um, the, whilst, the, whilst the laws are, are go back to the 1800s, um, the laws now are interpreted in a different way. Um, I can't speak to um, to answer your, 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 your question, I mean, I can't speak to, to, to successful extradition requests in, in recent times. Um, um, so again, that would have that to shows, be something that, yeah. that, that the authorities have to speak to. Yeah. But, but what I can speak to is the fact that the, the persons know, they, they, they fully appreciate they, and understand their rights, and so they engage the, the court process and they and they would invariably appeal where they are dissatisfied with that decision. Mm. You see? Yeah. Right. Okay. So I feel like I have a better understanding I now. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely. Anything uh, else you'd like to share with us about uh, extradition treaties and, and what it means for Belizeans and uh, what we need to understand? No, no, no. But, but I, 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 again, I'm, I'm, thank you for, for inviting me. And um, it is a, a very um, um, important thing because, as you indicated, I mean, uh, we, a person may or may not know that he may have committed an offense um, while he is in another country. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that um, knowing the seriousness uh, and the consequence of, of that is important because um, particularly where um, our country has a treaty arrangement, an extradition treaty arrangement um, with, with that foreign country. And, and as I indicated earlier, um, there are three countries right. which we have such um, treaty arrangement, mm -hmm. those being the United States, um, Guatemala, and Mexico. Mm -hmm. And um, so if you are in any of those countries, you must um, um, ensure that you don't commit any infraction <laughs> because if you come across the borders or come back into Belize, that, that may not, not be necessarily. That's not the yeah. end of it. <laughs> That's not the end of it. <laughs> Let's just tell people, let's all be law-abiding citizens of in course, general, of wherever course. you We're good are. People. <laughs> but we appreciate you coming in and being able to, to discuss this. I think often um, legal issues obviously are written mm -hmm. and, and explained oftentimes in the legal language. So it's great for people to have a better understanding as to yes. what it means. Yes. So thank you so much for taking the time this morning. Thank you. All right. All right. We're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we'll be talking about fire management. So stay tuned.